Hi guys, I'm back. Sorry, it went out. So let's do this again. Let's start over. I was actually connected to the wrong internet. We have a couple of um, internets here at the house, one specifically for my office, and I was not connected to that one. So let's give you guys a few more minutes to jump on. Sorry about that. You just never know with the internet, and we've been having some neighborhood internet issues too. I know, it's never ending, right? Okay, so hi again. Hi, Tammy. Um, thanks for joining me today. I am, like I told you, doing it a little bit earlier today. My kids have early release. It feels like every Friday for the last, I don't know, two months we've had something. So um, thanks for jumping on early. If you have to work during my Facebook Live, I apologize. But the, the good thing is, is that it's saved here and then I upload it on YouTube and my blog so you can always watch it later. Um, so today's um, theme, you know, I always try to pick a theme, a product or colors or something. Um, I am, I wanted to do Day at the Beach. I ordered this early on. It's in the Occasions catalog and I just never had gotten to it. It's good for summer, really. Um, hi, Lisa, I see you. Um, and I really want to, to use it. And so as the catalog winds down, I thought it would be a good time. This is another one that I'm using on all the projects. It's called Sweet Sentiments. And I adore this set. Um, really good general sentiments, but in different ways. Um, you know, there's thank you, there's graduate, um, hoping your day is perfect, I think qualifies for birthday. So um, this is a really good one too, and it is retiring. So um, those are the two today. As always, you will find these product sheets that it will have all the information on all the projects, pro uh, the product information and the measurements and stuff down at the bottom. So I will link to this after I'm done with the live video and it should be posting on my blog as we speak. Uh, this week I'm offering a hostess, and I mean an order incentive, it's tiny, but if you use that hostess code, on a minimum $35 order, between now and next Friday, I'll send you a pack of dimensionals. All right, so I'll post that also. Hi, Janet, yeah, sorry, I think my internet went out, you guys, sorry about that. Okay, so ordering incentive, you, I'll send you dimensionals, two retiring sets, and I think that's all I need to tell you before we get started. Um, as you guys know, when Stampin' Up! announces the retired list, the only thing that they will guarantee are the stamp sets. And even that, they, they only guarantee till about mid-May. So you guys know, if you want it, get it quickly because it'll be gone. I, I've heard some people saying it was in their cart and before they could even check out, things disappeared. So, so move quickly on those retired items. And I will tell you that today I'm using something that I realized this morning is already off the list. So um, anyway, so the stamps are good. We're good till about, I think, around the 20th. Okay, so let's get started. The first thing I did, I wanted to use these little glasses in the stamp set. I think they are awesome. Um, and so I thought, well, let's make a graduation gift card holder because it's graduation time and graduates love gift cards, right? So here, and I didn't have gift cards, so there's my orange leaf punch card, but <laughs> or my rewards card. But that's how it goes in there. You can see this is a framelit. I'm going to show you how to use it. It is retiring, and it is still available. And this is a good one. I am going to continue to use the heck out of this because we give a lot of gift cards. This is what it looks like. So we're going to start with a piece of basic black. And... If you guys haven't watched my live shows before, just know that my camera is mounted to my table. So when I use the big shot, it shakes a little bit. So look away if it makes you feel queasy. I'm sorry, I apologize. My video for, I mean my camera mount for my regular videos that I can um, edit is above. It's actually mounted on the ceiling, so that doesn't happen. But I can't use that for live videos because it's too far away and then you guys can't see what we're doing. Okay, so I cut this out, this gift card holder, out of basic black. And the colors I chose, I chose my, my own high school colors. So, of course, you want to use whatever school they're graduating from. You could easily just substitute whatever colors um, are their schools. So this is what it looks like when it comes out. And you can, I've done it several ways. You can actually fold these in like this and put adhesive right there so that that stays closed. And then it's just a little envelope. 
Um, I like to do them tall sometimes, so I will fold these two in and fold the bottom one up and so the gift card comes out this way. So today we're not gonna adhere it, it at all. We're gonna leave it so that it opens and we're gonna make a belly band around it. So you're gonna take whatever color is your school. Of course, I chose red because I was a Taft Raider and we were red, white, and black, I think. I know we were red and white, but I'm pretty sure black was in there. All right, to make the belly band, I'm just gonna fold it over. I'm not gonna do any score lines. I'm just gonna do it like this. We're gonna do it fast and dirty is what I call it. Now it looks like mine's a little bit long, so I'm just gonna trim that off a little bit. And we're gonna adhere it to itself. But first, I wanna stamp some of those cute little glasses. You can't really see it on the front too much, but on the back you can see those glasses. All right, so I'm just gonna use real red and kind of do them in different angles. These glasses can be sunglasses, they could be nerd glasses, they could be, whoops, well, we'll cover that up. They could be, you know, smarty pant glasses, whatever. They're so cute. They could go any way you want. All right, so now let's take this and fold it back over. Now, I, I messed up right there when I stamped. So let's cover that up. We're going to fold this over here, and that way you won't be able to see it. There you go. All right, so it slides off. It's a belly band. All right, now we're going to stamp the glasses. And we're gonna use a blender pen, and normally when you use a blender pen or an aqua painter, you wanna use um, watercolor paper or shimmer white cardstock. But because we're coloring just a tiny bit of this, I thought Whisper White would be fine. And the difference is that if you use a lot of water on Whisper White, it'll start pilling. Or not even so much as the water, it's just the constant rubbing over that surface. But this is a really tiny surface, so Whisper White worked fine for me. Now I've told you guys in the past that you can use the inside of your stamp case as kind of a paint palette for your inks and you would just squeeze your ink pad. But I, got, I finally got a new red. Seems like every time I use it on Facebook Live, it falls apart everywhere. So I got a new red, I'm gonna keep it nice and neat. And I'm just gonna take one of my clear blocks. You can see I left that ink on there from yesterday. And do that. My friend Tammy, she's here. She's the one that, that taught me that trick. All right, now a blender pen is really like a marker with no ink in it. It's like it has a clear liquid in it that will help you spread out that ink. And you can use any of our inks, and honestly, I've even used our basic gray, which I don't really think is designed for this, but it works fine too. Um, the other option when you're coloring these in, we actually have a, a couple more options, is you can do a um, aqua painter, and you would do it the same way with the inks like this, or you can use our colored pencils, our watercolor pencils. And the reason I'm not using them today is because I love, love, love our watercolor pencils, all of them except our red. Our red just isn't red enough for me. So I'm gonna just take it old school and use regular ink. Okay, so there we've got that. Now you wanna clean off you wanna move that block out of the way first because I'm telling you right now, it's gonna make a giant mess somewhere. At least it does for me. Now your, your um, blender pen, like I said, it's like a marker that is has no ink in it. It has something in it, but to, we're gonna switch colors now. And so I wanna, you wanna take it on some scratch paper or a paper towel and just keep you know making marks until it goes clean. Now for the gray inside, I'm using Smoky Slate. And this stamp pad's already messed up, so we're gonna just leave it like that. And I'm gonna use my Wink of Stella. Did you guys know that you can use your Wink of Stella as kind of a, an aqua painter also? So I'm just gonna very carefully go in here. I don't want it to pull that red. So I'm gonna really try to stay in those lines. And this is gonna give it a shimmery look. And I thought that would kind of be fun for a graduate, you know, like looking into the future. My future's so bright, I gotta wear shades, you know, that kind of thing. We, our school district uses that a lot. Ah, I got a little bit of red in there. All right, now you, if you wanna do some shading, you can make it darker up here and a little darker up here. There you go. Now, can you guys see how that's kind of sh um, 
shiny, like reflective. I thought first, I thought at first that I could stamp it on silver foil and then cut out the little glass part because that would be really cute. But let me tell you, even with my love of fussy cutting, that was hard. Um, so I skipped that <laughs> and I decided we would go this route and I like it. Okay, so I'm using Congratulations Graduate from that sweet um, sentiments and I'm just going to do basic black. This one I did kind of the side, but I think this time I'm just, let's make sure it's not upside down again. The reason why I don't put um, stickers on the back of my stamps, I think I've told you guys this before, is that, um, and you probably know this, that they don't stick well to the uh, clear blocks. Once you put those stickers on, it's really difficult to get them to stick. And there are some workarounds, but I'm also lazy, honestly, and don't just don't take the time to do it. Um, I'd rather just slap them on there and be done. Okay, so I'm using an oval, layering oval. Can you guys see? There we go. All right, sorry, shaky table. These are our layering oval thinlets. Um, if you don't have our layering circles, squares, or ovals, I recommend them. I use them, I mean, I probably use them on every single project that I do. They're, they're so great. Okay, now, I, okay, I need to stay organized. I'm not going to know where anything is. In my pile over here, well, I'm already disorganized and missing stuff. I cut out a silver foil oval. Oh, it's right here. It's blending in with my, my scissors. So here's the oval um, that's the next size up from this, the scallop oval that is the next size up from this one. I already cut it out of the silver foil. I get lots of questions about this silver foil, you guys, and it's in the catalog. It's really great. It comes in silver and gold. And I am using up the last of my Sending Love ribbon. Uh, this was the in the Valentine's um, suite of stuff that's there in the Occasions catalog. And this ribbon is still available. It comes in a two pack, um, red and white, and it's skinny. That's why I really like it. It um, ties really easily. So I'm gonna tie this around. Before you pull it loose, just straighten up those little loops. You can get them to turn before you uh, tighten that bow. There we go. All right, now, couple of dimensionals and we're almost done with this. I don't have any graduates this year to give gifts to. I, I usually have somebody but not this year. I'll save these for later. Okay there we have the outside and they can just slide that off and open it up. Now let me show you what I did to the inside. Here's the little piece of white that goes in. The measurements are on the product sheets. I don't remember what it is. And I'm just gonna take these glasses and just kind of do them a little bit offset like this. And then I got a little skinny piece of real red. And it's the length, the same length as the white. And I'm gonna put a glue dot on each end and put it here. This is gonna kind of hold the gift card in place like that. So the gift card will slide behind there. Just kind of hold it in place and you can write your message there. All right, I've got some ink there on the table. I don't want to put that white down. And we're going to just put that right in there. All right, there we go. And then you would fold it up and slide that belly band in. And there you have it. A simple, easy gift card holder. All right, so there you go. There's your first project. I hope you guys like it. I'm telling you that gift card um, thinlet is a must have if you don't have it yet. It comes with a few other little framelits there that work well with a banner, I think a tag. So check it out if you don't have it. It's really, really good. Okay, so let's move everything out of the way. And project number two is kind of um, different. I've done this kind of project before, but on a smaller scale. You can see how big it is. This is one of these, you know, folded pouches. And I will tell you, I like to buy the little oatmeal cream pies um, that you get, you know, in the little Debbie area, because uh, they're good, they fit in thin things. Well, this time I accidentally bought the jumbo ones, and these are giant, and my kids are trying to eat them. 
and they're just way too much cookies. <laughs> but anyways, it kind of is deceiving on here because it isn't a little oatmeal pie. It's a big oatmeal pie that fits in here. And I was thinking this would be a really cute treat, um, a thank you at a pool party, you know, thanks for coming or end of the year party. Um, so anyway, let me show you how to make it. You're gonna start out with a piece of craft cardstock and craft is one of my very favorites and I'm super sad to see it go. I just think that there's not really much that replaces the craft cardstock. Um, anyway, I dwell. We have to let it go, right? A uh, little funeral for craft cardstock. I cut it to 10 by 10. So you can do this with any size square, basically. So if I had left it at 12 by 12, it would be even bigger. So the first thing you're going to do is turn it so that it's like a diamond and take those points up to the top and match them right there. Now the craft cardstock is really thick, so you have to you have to go slow and be patient. But it it is it makes for a really sturdy treat holder. So take your bone folder and fold all the way over. Now you're going to take this little it looks like an arm to me, like the arms are crossing. And we're going to make that go across straight across like that. So you want this to be a straight line, as straight as possible. All right, and then this one's gonna go the same direction, like that. I have done these before as gift card holders too. If you do them smaller, they make great gift card holders. All right, let's make sure that lines up. All right, now we're gonna take this, you can see how there's two here, and we're gonna take this one and fold it down. And you really don't need any adhesive at that point because it stays together. Isn't that neat? I love that. Okay, so I didn't want to leave the back um, boring, and so I, I cut a four by four square, and I'm just gonna stamp the little sun all over it. Like this, just random. I uh, was at the kids' school this morning. They had a, my youngest daughter had a little program, and my older daughter's teacher came and said, what are we gonna do? For their end of the year party because I'm the room mom and so I was thinking on the way home you know I could make these or I could even teach the kids how to make these these would be fun I think that they could I mean we probably would use a different paper but other than that I think that they could do it fourth graders okay so there we've got the background now let's make the tag and I I'm gonna clip the tag on with this gold binder clip I'm gonna put it right there so I don't lose it Okay, so for the tag, let me show you what I did a lot of different things here. Um, oh, a napkin, yeah, that's a great idea. And put the fork and then the knife in there, that's cute, that's a great idea. So this is from the um, Squiggles and, oh, I can't remember, let me like the Squiggles, it has a funny name, Swirly Scribbles Thinlets. So this is part of that, and you can see I broke mine a while ago. Don't even ask, I was trying to get it to go this way when it should go this way. But anyway, so I went, I cut those out so I wouldn't have to be embarrassed and you guys could see how ugly it looks when it cuts out. But it still works for what we're gonna do. And I have a, a whisper white circle, um, and usually I would recommend using fine tip glue for this. But you guys know how I feel about fine tip glue. It, we are not friends. I make a giant mess with fine tip glue. So I'm gonna use glue dots. Now, if you guys weren't watching, I would attempt to use that fine tip glue, but I'm not gonna let it embarrass me today. <laughs> All right, so just put that one on. That's Tempting Turquoise. And this one is Pacific Point. Two really good ocean colors or water colors. Cause summer is coming. We're gonna be spending lots of time in our bathing suits here at my house. It doesn't make me very happy, but my girls sure love it. All right, and then I'm gonna kind of do a little bit like that over. See how they're kind of, well, whoops, stick to the table. See how they're kind of offset a little bit. And then, now you can just put this on Whisper White Paper and put your um, framelit right on top. That's what I did on the original one. And then just cut it all at the same time. Or you can turn it around like this and just trim them off like that, okay? All right, now let's do the beach ball. 
And the beach ball, we're gonna do in basic black. And this is our archival black. And when I'm watercoloring or coloring something in with our pencils or anything, I always wanna heat set it because it, it dries very quickly, but it will run a little bit sometimes. So just be careful when you're going to heat, I mean, when you're going to color it, just go ahead and heat set it just to be careful because nothing's more frustrating than starting to color something and then seeing that black ink smear. All right, so let me grab my blender pen again and we're gonna color this beach ball. Um, we're gonna start with Daffodil Delight. Now I will say that these images kind of have a second line going. If you can see, um, I, I think it's more like to create dimension on the image. So when you start coloring it, you might be a little bit confused. So just look at those solid lines. And we're actually gonna leave the, the color in between those two little lines. We're just gonna leave that white because that's kind of how beach balls are. All right, so that's Daffodil Delight and my real red, no, did we do real red on it? Let me look. Yeah, we did at the top. Right there. And then let's do some Pacific Point. All my favorite bright colors, I love it. And again, I used Whisper White because it's a very small area and I'm not gonna do a whole lot of shading. So the, the paper will be okay. It's when I start rubbing over and over and over again that I would be in trouble. I'm putting a little bit more um, ink down at the bottom just to create a little bit of, of um, a shadow there. And the last is Pumpkin Pie. And I got out of the lines on this one on my first one, so let's see if I can stay in the lines this time. There's an awful glare from where I'm standing, but I think I got it. Slow and steady. A little more ink right there. There's some weird stuff in my orange, my pumpkin pie. It looks like maybe my hair fell into the ink pad. I need to clean that out. <laughs> Keeping it real on Facebook Live, you never know what you're gonna see. Okay, now that we've got that, I'm gonna take my one and a quarter circle punch and punch that out. You could hand cut it or you can use your circle punch. All right, now we're gonna create a little, a little flag and we're using this stamp that says thanks, a bunch of thanks. And I'm gonna stamp it twice because I need for it to be kind of long. Let's make sure I'm not upside down. So I'm going to try to get as close as possible. Oh, that's pretty good. Not too bad. I had to try a couple of times the first time I did it. All right, so now I'm just gonna trim it down. Let me get all these stamps out of the way. Let's just trim it down. And I know you guys are gonna ask me about this paper cutter. I've had it for a thousand years from a craft store. It's, it's uh, ancient, but I love it. Okay, now we're gonna use the banner triple punch. Kind of get it centered in there. And we are ready to load it all up. Okay, so let's do some dimensionals here on this little flag. And then the beach ball on top of the flag, like that. Well, I feel like that's covering up too much of the water. Let's see if I take that off and if I can do it without tearing. Let's do it a little bit hmm, lower like that. There, now you can see more of that color. All right, so we're ready to, to uh, snap that on right there. And we're gonna do a bow of my favorite thick Whisper White twine and I'm gonna fold two pieces together and tie them just like it's one piece. and trim those little legs off and grab a glue dot 
I don't know how everything gets so disorganized. I get so super organized before, and then while I'm trying to show you guys stuff, everything is everywhere. I can't find anything. All right, and there we go. And you could put lots of stuff in there. I even had some little candy bars I tried. Um, some little, you know, you could do like a little sunglasses and a little tiny um, suntan lotion. That would be really cute. Okay, so there's project number two. I hope you guys like it. Let me clear off this giant mess that I have. And we will do our last project. I think our last project is my favorite. Once I finally got, got it done, it was exactly what I was hoping for. It took a while. Sometimes when I'm creating, things aren't, aren't turning out the way I want them to. And it takes a while to finally get there. I did this several times before we finally got to it. Okay, so this is a card, and this is going to use a product that's sold out, this large polka dot embossing folder. Unfortunately, when I went, when I was typing up the list, I realized it is already sold out. But if you don't already have it, there is something coming in the new catalog that is very similar, and it would do the exact same thing. And this technique that I'm going to show you, you could use any of your embossing folders on this. Okay, so little cute little flip-flops, and inside... Hoping your day is perfect. Oh, that would make a cute little birthday card. All right, so let's get started. The first thing that I did is I cut a piece of Whisper White that is a tad smaller than the front of my card. So I think it's four and an eighth by five and three eighths. It's on that, it's on my pro product project sheet. All right, and then I cut one inch strips of the these four colors we're going to start i'll tell you what colors they are as we go this is flirty flamingo this is a uh, in color we have one more year with this in color and i love this color and i'm going to put it here um so there's a little tiny bit of a border and then daffodil delight and you want to make sure that you get them lined up at the top and the bottom and then we have Tempting Turquoise. Let's see, this one seems a little bit crooked, so I'm gonna, and that's funny because I cut them all at the exact same time. That I put all four of the cardstocks together and cut them so that they would all be exactly like. So if one was off and they'd all be off and it would be okay. Now, when I get down here to the end, if I went all the way to the edge, I would cover that up. So I am gonna just take and just overlap it a just a sliver like that okay fun pool beach party colors now I'm gonna take my big shot and this time we're not gonna use the magnetic platform we need to use the the um, multi-purpose platform that comes with it and if you have bought your big shot anytime in the last uh, I think about a year your Big Shot has a really cool multi-purpose platform. And um, I couldn't find mine this morning. I don't know where it is. So I'm using my old one, which looks like this. So if you have the old one, just open it up to the back. And we're going to put our regular clear plate on there. And the embossing folder, you want the polka dots on here, you want them popping this way. So that means when you put it in your embossing folder, there's a side that's raised, okay? We're gonna put that on the back because that's gonna push the cardstock towards us and that's what we want. We want the cardstock popping towards us. Um, the first time I did it, I did it backwards and, the, and it went backwards, which will be fine too. Um, but for really what I was going for is I wanted them popping out. So, Put this here and make sure that the raised polka dots are on the back. All right, we're gonna run it through. Sorry for the shaky camera. And let's take it out. Let's move this out of the way. We're gonna need that again in a second. And you'll see that we have polka dots. Isn't that awesome? So just think about the possibilities that you could do with this. You know, we have so many beautiful embossing folders. You could make ombre cards like this. Um, you could do um, a pattern, you know, like, like if you were making a graduation card, do the school colors. You could do skinnier strips. You could do, I don't know, so many cool possibilities. Kind of creates your own pattern paper. All right, so I just, um, 
stuck it down to a whisper white card base and now let's do the flip-flops the stamping of the flip-flops and I'm actually going to stamp them twice in the flirty flamingo let me get all my stuff out of my little cute little tray here because it's in the way all right so the first time I stamp it I'm going to do it on whisper white I'm just going to stamp well I need to get in the screen right there okay then I'm going to stamp it in flirty flamingo okay we're going to do a little fussy cutting so we're going to move this one aside and while we're cutting we're also going to cut out this little open frame in the back I'm using a scallop square and a regular square these framelits are part of the um, layering square framelits that I'm always talking about the layering squares the layering circles all right so I'm getting rid of my multi-purpose platform that is such a mouthful I'm pulling my my magnetic platform back over now, of course you could use your multi-purpose platform if that's all you had that's totally fine the magnetic platform just helps us to keep those in place where we want them okay now that is the stitched square stitched shape framelits it is this one of the stitched squares but you could just use one of your layering squares too all right so I'm putting the smaller one I'm still out of the camera I'm putting the smaller one inside like that okay we're gonna create a frame we're gonna do it all with one swoop Ah, shaky, shaky, sorry. All right, so let me pull these off. Here's our stitched shape. And so you can see when I take this off and I take that off, that's going to come out of there. Well, it should. Hmm. Now it's being naughty, so I don't know why that happened, but I'm just going to trim it like that. So you have a frame. All right. I think we're done with the big shot. Let's move it out of the way for good. And let's layer these things. Oh, we gotta do some fussy cutting first. Ah, and I don't have my little scissors. Let me grab my little scissors because fussy cutting is best done with tiny scissors. All right, so now I'm just gonna cut these guys out on the flirty flamingo. And usually when I cut out, I will stay on the outside of the line, trying to create like a little cloud around but because we have stamped this already in the middle we can lay these inside of that outside line of these so you can just make your cuts inside and it really won't matter how jaggedy your cuts are because they're going to line up with these guys well i say that but i don't like this right here let's fix that and cut away the cardstock as you go because when you have a lot of cardstock hanging around, it makes it harder to, to twist your, your cardstock around while you're cutting it. So just trim off some of that extra cardstock as you go. All right, now, of course, we're gonna stick these down with dimensionals. All right, one here and one here. If you guys haven't heard yet, we have tiny dimensionals coming in the new catalog. They're new and they're tiny. I'm so excited. I, I didn't think that there could be something as exciting as a regular dimensional, but now I know we're going to have tiny dimensionals. <laughs> I know the things I get excited about. Right here is where I could use some tiny dimensionals. I'm going to take this, this little skinny edge right here and cut it because it works really good for the frame. I'm expecting my new catalogs to arrive today. I got a notice from UPS that I am going to be receiving nine boxes today. So I'm assuming those are my catalogs and I'm gonna start working on those all next week, trying to get those uh, labeled and ready to go. Um, and I plan on hopefully shipping them the third week. See how I'm gonna do this offset while I'm talking. I want to just point that out this is going to be kind of offset like that so I'm hoping to get those catalogs out the third week of May now if you're in my stamp club 
you will get a spiral bound catalog. You know, I've already told you that. And if you have, if you're not in my club, but you have placed an order in my Stamping Up store, that doesn't include classes, because I, I go off who has ordered from me online, um, you will automatically get a catalog in the mail from me. You don't even need to ask for one. But if that's not you and you want a catalog from me, just let me know. Don't, don't comment on this feed. Please send me an email. It's hard for me to keep up with all that, but I need, I need an email from you. And you can send me an email at erica at pinkbuckaroo.com. All right, so Flirty Flamingo Ruched Ribbon. I'm just going to put that kind of, well, I don't know. Yeah, I like that. I don't want it covering that frame too much. Let's move it over here. I want you to be able to see that frame. All right, isn't that so cute? I just love it. All right, let's do something on the inside. Let's stamp these cute little flip-flops again. I'm gonna do them like that. And then, this is where I'm gonna put my sentiment. Um, let's make sure it's right. Hoping your day is perfect. And I'm gonna overlap it a little bit, like that. And there we have it. All right, so there are three projects all using Day at the Beach and um, Sweet Sentiments. Let me remind you, if you weren't here at the very beginning, I am giving away, I may not have even said that, I'm giving away this stamp set this week on my blog. Right now you can hop over there. There's a um, entry form at the bottom of the post. It's called Raffle Copter and you enter your information there. You have to have joined my mailing list, so make sure you've joined my mailing list. And um, I will draw a winner. And actually, I forgot to say that I drew the winner early this morning for last week uh, for the framelits. And Kimberly Q, I'm not even gonna attempt to say her last name. She and I have already chatted this morning and her prize is already packed up and ready to go. So if you wanna win this one, Make sure you fill that little raffle copter in. Also, the product project sheet. I'll post them here on Facebook in here, here just a minute. Um, and they are on my blog as well. And remember, any orders this week that are $35, minimum $35, and use this hostess code, I'm going to send you a pack of my lovely favorite dimensionals. Okay, um, Mary, you're asking if you can buy the stamp sets. Yes, they are available in the Stamping Up store. I will have, um, it's on my product sheet right here. You can even look, it has the item numbers and how much they cost. Okay, all right, you guys, thanks for joining me early today. I appreciate it. Um, as the clock ticks down the summer, I'm not sure what I'm gonna do about Facebook Friday in the summer. Um, I try to really spend a lot of time with my kids as much as possible. So we may, it may just be more sporadic. But for now, I hope you guys are enjoying it. I'm enjoying it. I like planning these fun projects. And I appreciate your participation. All right, guys, have a wonderful weekend. Thanks. Bye.